Forbidden Psalm describes itself as a skirmish-sized miniatures game of blood, metal, death, and socks. Created by Kevin Rahman Daltrey and played on a two foot by two foot area, Forbidden Psalm is a game both set in and fully compatible with the Morkborg RPG system. And the love and passion Kevin has for Morkborg is evident from the very first page. If Morkborg is the type of game parents of the 80s feared was corrupting their children and turning them towards satanic worship, then Forbidden Psalm is likely to be its perfect miniature adaptation. The book wastes no time, and after a brief snippet on the setting, along with some miniature gaming fundamentals, it jumps straight into what will form the foundation of your time with this system. Creating your warband. Being a miniatures agnostic game in nature, rather than presenting you with multiple stat lines for different types of warband members, you instead generate your warband through rolling specific die and comparing the results to various tables to create five unique characters. It is with these initial downtrodden helpless souls that you will serve the mad wizard in his search for the powerful forbidden psalm. These randomization tables found both in the front and the back of the book make this game great for those who enjoy kit bashing, or are even looking to learn more about this side of the hobby. For those who might be unfamiliar with kit bashing, there are even two pages in the back dedicated to various tips, YouTubers and websites to check out for guides. Of course, the game isn't limited to those who only want to kit bash, as players can easily use miniatures they already own to play, highlighting one of the most appealing aspects of miniatures agnostic games. The cost of entry is simply the price of the rulebook. While randomization tables may put some players off, there is nothing to say you couldn't simply pick and choose to build your characters how you want, as after all, these games are designed to be played as you see fit. Personally, I find there is a certain satisfaction to these tables, as not only does it help provide me with names, something I am notoriously bad at thinking of, but these types of tables always seem to have a way of generating a character that just makes sense, and instantly inspires the formation of a rough backstory of what led them to this point in their life. Whilst Forbidden Psalm has many strengths, of which I will be getting to shortly, something important to mention early on is what might be considered a weakness of the game, the combat system. Just like in its parent system Morkborg, combat in Forbidden Psalm involves rolling a 20 sided die and, after applying any modifiers, seeing if the total is higher than 12. If it is, the attack is considered a success and damage is dealt, otherwise it is considered a miss. This simplistic nature is something of a double edged sword as while it may dissuade some from giving this amazing game a go, it also makes the system extremely easy to learn and escapes the potential clunkiness that some combat systems can face. While it is simplistic, this combat system still perfectly captures the sheer brutality and thus narrative potential of the Mork Borg universe. Melee combat is perhaps the perfect example of this, as when you hit an enemy in Forbidden Psalm, they're going to hit you back. This means if you hit one of the many hulking monstrosities of this universe, it is likely going to hit you back much harder. What was once a simple combat becomes filled with risk, forcing the player to carefully consider how certain foes need to be felled, else risk losing a valued member of the party. This mechanic helps Forbidden Psalm lean perfectly into the tone of the Morkborg universe. After all, life is cheap in this world, and throughout your Forbidden Psalm campaigns, models will die. The world of Forbidden Psalm is a dangerous, unforgiving place, and in the grand scheme of things, your little warband of mercenaries means very little. Should you not wish to risk the perils of melee combat, range combat would be the next best option if your warband members have keen enough eyes. But the third and easily most powerful and brutal type of attack in Forbidden Psalm is spellcasting. Each warband contains one member who can wield clean and unclean scrolls, the items that will allow you to access the dangerous magic of Forbidden Psalm. As with all attacks in Forbidden Psalm, it requires a 12 or higher to successfully cast a spell, but failing to do so is where the true danger lies. Whenever a spell fails to cast, one is added to the Warband's Calamity Meter, which will carry across scenarios throughout your campaign. When your caster inevitably rolls a 1 whilst conjuring a spell, these calamities manifest into a horrific fate. If you get lucky, the scroll may simply be lost, they might lose a limb, take some damage or become pinned in place for a number of rounds. But the majority of the time, these calamities will result in irreversible death. Whether it be due to the magic of the scroll backfiring and melting your caster into a puddle of ichor, a spontaneous explosion, or even the dreaded god, the two-headed basilisk, coming forth from the environment and devouring your caster whole. The caster's last moments will be filled with pain and terror. Just like the melee system, casting in Forbidden Psalm really creates a sense of drama and tension, which will inevitably lead to the tide of battles turning instantly and the game becoming burnt into your memory as one to remember. 
I was talking about the dangers present in Forbidden Psalm, it's worth mentioning two areas where the system really jumps out to me, the scenario and monster sections. Whilst the book only contains 11 monster profiles, each managed to capture some of the horrors found in this universe brilliantly. Thanks to the system's compatibility with Morkborg, it is also super easy to translate your favourite monsters from Morkborg into Forbidden Psalm. The art for the monster section is definitely worth noting, with each creature your warband can encounter captured in a beautiful, haunting style. The art and layout throughout the book as a whole is wonderful, and really captures the spirit and style of Morkborg. All the artwork found in this book makes it a real draw, causing Forbidden Psalm to easily stand out from the crowd of other systems found in the wargaming space. As for the scenario section, it is a narrative treasure trove. With scenarios only lasting for 6 rounds before the party will decide to cut their losses and flee, Forbidden Psalm creates a fast paced, action packed skirmish game that you could easily play several games of across one evening. The missions that the Mad Wizard will send your warband on all require a good amount of thought, and no small degree of luck, to be completed successfully with minimal losses. There's even the inclusion of RPG guidance, should you wish to use Forbidden Psalm as an adventure for your Morkborg party, or to simply add more narrative to your tabletop experience. Each scenario offers three ways to play, either versus an opponent's warband with AI-controlled monsters to harass both sides, cooperatively, should you wish to work together to achieve the Mad Wizard's prizes, or solo, if you fancy an evening of gaming alone. These three ways to play not only create a replayability factor for each scenario should you wish to experience them again in a different way, but also present you with a great deal of choice on how to play your games. However, this leads me into what I consider the second weakness of Forbidden Psalm, the lack of depth to solo play. While the game isn't built or marketed as a solo play experience, the addition of this mode is a nice touch, considering solo play has become coveted over the past year. I personally have always been a sucker for solo play, as it can allow me to explore a system before playing it with others. Currently, the solo play aspect consists of altering each scenario in a specific way, as well as some fairly basic AI rules that have enemies run through a checklist to decide on their behaviour. Solo play will never likely reach the complexity of a real player until computers become involved, and the attempt to do so without often leads to systems becoming clunky and hard to play. However, one game I feel does solo play particularly well is Five Parsecs From Home, and I feel Forbidden Psalm, along with many other games, would benefit from taking some notes. Five Parsecs From Home is marketed as a solo play centric game, so naturally this aspect has received plenty of thought and testing. Simply put, Five Parsecs From Home assigns each enemy type specific behaviours that in turn dictate how they act on the battlefield. It has managed to do this without pages filled with text, resulting in this aspect of the game being easy to grasp and the enemies still creating a pleasant play experience. I would love to see Forbidden Psalm attempt something similar in a future expansion, should Kevin feel the game would benefit from such an addition. However, even if this never comes to pass, this is still such a small weakness in what is a very captivating game, and I would still happily undergo the Mad Wizard's deadly tasks any day of the week. I think the perfect place to end this review for Forbidden Psalm is on where the game shines brightest to me. It's narrative. In many campaign systems, death is the worst thing that can befall a member of your party, and depending on how deep into the campaign this occurs, the effects can be devastating. In Forbidden Psalm, this is not the case. Life is cheap in this world, no one's story has a happy ending, and there will always be those desperate enough for coin to risk their lives. Almost all games set in these post-apocalyptic universes are after some major calamity has occurred, or involve your party preventing it, generally filling you with a sense of hope at a potential happily ever after. In Forbidden Psalm, the powers that be have literally decreed that the end of the world is nigh, and there is nothing that can be done to stop it. No heroic quest can be undertaken, no great evil is there to be slain, there's no convoluted plan to be stopped, the world is simply ending. And if you're lucky, your party may get to live out their last days in comfort, but the chances of that happening are slim. It is this sense of hopelessness, this finality, that makes Forbidden Psalm appeal to me so. Through the use of artwork, rules, and scenario design, Kevin Rom and Daltrey has managed to capture these core principles of the Morkborg universe and seamlessly translate them onto the tabletop for all to enjoy. When I play Forbidden Psalm, I think not of the lives my warband will lead once their dealing with the Mad Wizard has ended, I think of the hope they may cling to, the cautious optimism they might possess 
that things might just be okay, and how ultimately none of that matters. For their world is a cruel, unforgiving place that will take everything and leave them with nothing. In short, Forbidden Psalm is a delightful game that seamlessly translates the horrifying and doomed universe of Morkborg onto the tabletop, for game masters to play out their sessions or war gamers to explore its horrors. While the combat system may be simple, it holds deep narrative potential, and when combined with the warband creation and scenarios, it creates a fast-paced, brutal game that will leave you wanting more. If you want to pick Forbidden Psalm up, make sure to check out Rook's Press if you're in Europe, or Exalted Funeral if you're in the States. Forbidden Psalm is also available digitally on the drive through RPG store for all you digital-loving folk out there. If you happen to be watching this video in June 2021, Kevin is also about to launch a Kickstarter campaign for the expansion book In the Footsteps of the Mad Wizard, which will also offer the opportunity to pick up both the softback and hardback versions of Forbidden Psalm, so make sure to head on over to the Kickstarter and check out the project. Also, make sure to keep your eye on this channel, for my foray into the world of Forbidden Psalm is coming soon. I'll see you all in the next video, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.